PG&E is expected to give us another update in about a half an hour. But right now, more than 34,000 PG&E customers in Napa and Sonoma counties are without power. And a small section of San Mateo County will be losing power at 1 a.m. We have team coverage on the blackout and the fire danger for you. We begin with KPX 5's Wilson Walker live in Santa Rosa. Wilson. Well, look, uh, we've covered a bunch of these now, and it's a little bit like chasing ghosts out here. I'm at Highway 12 and Calistoga Road. This is one of the intersections that the county expected uh, to lose power for the traffic lights. As you can see behind me, they're still working here. They're off at a couple spots down the road. The neighborhood beside me does not have power. So uh, it's unfolding sort of little bit by little bit out here. There is a good bit of uncertainty, and as we have seen over the last couple of weeks, this always comes, depending on who you are with a certain measure of inconvenience. Um, well, we have a special needs son, so we get no, um, notified by North Bay Regional Center and um, the school district to tell us know that we don't have school for tomorrow for our son that was over at Binkley. The final warnings came early this afternoon just as the wind started to pick up along with traffic at the grocery stores. No mice. <laughs> I mean, where this is going to happen, it's the price for living in paradise, so we adjust. Some businesses closed preemptively, among them a bank and an ice cream store. There was plenty of evidence that people here had been through this before. The last power outage compelled us to be prepared because we weren't prepared. The shutdown two weeks ago inspired Cynthia Johnson's family to buy a generator. They will need it tonight. It doesn't light up our whole house, but we can keep our refrigerators and our telephones and her husband's CPAP going. But the shutdown footprint is smaller this time. Some of the homes and businesses left in the dark two weeks ago are spared on today's map. That's correct. We're on the borderline, though. We, we look at uh, their map and we're like right on the borderline, so it's kind of you know, if you got a quarter, let's flip it, you know. But where the power is going out this evening, the inconvenience begins again. Uh, I understand they're trying to, you know, keep us safe uh, from the danger of the fire and everything, but uh, there is hardships, too, that come along with it. So we're really trying to be prepared as much as possible. We understand that this is going to be the, quote, normal. The new normal. Well, now I spoke to county emergency officials earlier today as they were sort of lurching towards that three o'clock shutdown time. And I asked them if they were getting any better information this time around than they did last time from PGE. And the answer was, well, a little bit. They have an earlier phone call that starts at 7 30 in the morning that gives them a little bit of a head start on the day. But they said that a lot of what they prepared for today was just based on what happened last time, that they're not particularly armed with any more information. Information. They're taking what happened last time, kind of going by that playbook and seeing what happens. And as we can show you there, you know, a little bit of surprises here as to exactly where the power is out so far. There could be, of course, more to come. We are live on the western edge of Santa Rosa. Wilson Walker, KPIX 5. You can hear it there, the gusting winds beginning to mount on Mount St. Helena this evening. This is why PG&E says it made the call to shut off power. Our meteorologist Darren Peck is tracking the red flag conditions as those winds begin to pick up. Darren? Ken, I like what Wilson said and the woman who he interviewed had to say. They used the word normal for this because as far as the weather's concerned, this is kind of a normal and moderate situation for offshore wind events. We should get three or four of these at least every fall, and we've got one now. Doesn't change the fact that we've got to have some significant preparation in light of the recent fire history. But let's talk about the wind speeds here. Red flag warning in place for all the hills surrounding the Bay Area. Gust to 60 miles an hour still possible. And as we just saw up on Mount St. Helena, it's already started up there. And if you're in the North Bay, you've probably already noticed a bit of a breeze. I'm going to advance this now to when we get into the heart of the issue. Overnight tonight, that says 2 a.m. And while there might be a 22 mile an hour gust for Santa Rosa, we need to come in for a closer view because it's not Santa Rosa we're concerned about. It's the mountains up here. See the bright colors of purple? Those are the Mykonos Mountains in the North Bay. They are oriented just perfectly so that when these northeast winds come, they've got to go right over the main front of the mountains. And that's why we keep pointing out Mount St. Helena for a 60 mile an hour gust. Remember when we did this a week and a half ago? We had a 75 mile an hour gust up there. Same thing down at Santa Rosa. It was like a 25 mile an hour wind. So those are the differences. It's what happens in the mountains that matters most. 
It's another one of these coming on Sunday. Plus, we need to talk about our warm-up as well. I'll see you with that and the rest of the forecast in a few minutes, guys. Back over to you. All right, Darren, thank you. With these outages raising concerns about traffic accidents during the school rush, the city of Santa Rosa wants classes canceled. Hidden Valley Elementary is right in the middle of the blackout zone and opted to dismiss classes before the first wave hit. Some parents told KPIX they're tired of this pattern. Others say better safe than sorry. Every time the, the wind, the PG is turned off the power, I mean the kid going to be out of school for like a three day, four days a week. That's not good for the kid, you know. If there's danger, I think we need to be dismissed early. Hidden Valley will remain closed tomorrow. Three other Santa Rosa schools are also following suit. Mario Carrillo High, Rincon Valley Middle, also Santa Rosa Accelerated Charter School.